Welcome to the Alchemy of Ascension Season 5, Activating Star Seeds, Walk Ins, and the New Human of the Golden Age. I'm your host, Washela Sananda, and today it's my pleasure to introduce you to Celia Fenn. Welcome, Celia. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, and I'm happy to have you back. This is your second appearance on the Alchemy of Ascension. So it's I'm excited to really dive in. And I know you've got some wonderful material for us today. Um, so before we begin that, I would love to have everyone just join us in a brief alignment process so that we can really get present and open for what you're about to hear and receive today. So for starters, just if you're in a place where you can close your eyes, go ahead and close your eyes and deep in the breath, taking some deep breaths, tune into the heart center and get in touch with the light in your heart, breathing into that light, allowing it to expand and then expand the light from your heart up above your head, making contact with the heart light of central sun, bringing that heart light down into the crown of your head, into every energy center, and then extending down into the heart light of this planet Earth, the core, the heart center of Mother Earth, and bring that light up now into the base of the spine, and into the heart, into every energy center. And then these three energies from above, below, and within meet in your heart center, creating a holy trinity of light. And in this light, may we all be focused, harmonized, balanced, and open to receive whatever is for your highest good today in this conversation. Take another deep breath and then come on back. Thank you for doing that with me. And now I'll share a little bit about Celia. Celia Fenn is an international writer, channel, artist, spiritual creative, shaman, and group facilitator. She worked for 12 years as a university teacher of English literature before switching to a career in healing therapy. For 10 years, she helped many people to find their own spiritual healing path to wholeness and inner peace. She became a channel for Archangel Michael and developed the Star Child Global website. Her current focus is on the grounding of the new earth, quantum reality and timelines, the importance of the divine feminine energy, and rediscovering the power of shamanic practice and ceremony in a modality called galactic shamanism. All right, so I'm so excited to dive in with you today, and I know you have so much to share, Celia, so um, because it's your second time, we don't need to jump into your origin story. We're just going to hit the ground running. And um, I'd love to have you begin with, I know you've been receiving some information recently about the new earth and how humans can really activate ourselves to be able to enter into and help create and co-create the new earth. I am really, as you say, very excited about uh, what's happening right now. And when I say right now, we're in this uh, like window period uh, between the 22nd of January, 22nd of February, which includes the 2nd of February. Um, I know this is going to be broadcast a bit later, but uh, we're in this period of huge, tremendous shift. And I'm sure everyone can feel um, at the moment uh, so much cosmic solar galactic energy just pouring into the planet especially starting around the 22nd um, everyone's been feeling it in their physical body and this is what's so exciting is that uh, as we move into the new earth it's not just a spiritual process or uh, even a mental process it's actually become a full body process and, and this is what Archangel Michael is saying that as we move into the new earth and into this this new human state it has to be a combination of spirit, soul, and body, these three levels. So the spirit level is where we acknowledge our connection to divinity, 
to uh, the galactic heart, whatever you want to call it, the, the central sun, uh, prime creator, whatever, whatever it is to you, and how you, you breathe that energy, you know, the, the energy in, in the cosmos pulsates. And when we breathe, and when we open our heart, we align with that energy, which of course is what you did at the beginning. And then as we move into connection with our soul level energy, we connect with our angelic families and our galactic families and those energies. We discover, we come to remember that we are in fact uh, infinite beings. Uh, we have angelic galactic star seed energies. But the third level, which is unfolding right now, is the fact that our human physical body is also, it's a sacred container, it's a divine creation, and it has within it um, energies and um, the ability to integrate energies from light codes, from uh, source codes, from solar flares, from all those energy fields into the physical body through the DNA. And what I've been working with, with Archangel Michael, is the fact that our DNA is um, not just simply, uh, as medicine considers it to be like it's a recording device for the human genome, and then there's all this junk stuff that they're not quite sure what it's for. But Archangel Michael says it, it, we do have our, our template for ourselves, our human genome for us. We also have our ancestral lines, which are recorded all the way back to the beginning. And we also have a holographic manifestation energy device that allows us to create and co-create our reality. And it's only when we can fully activate this combination of aspects of ourselves that we become the new human because we're functioning as we originally were intended to uh, when we were created. But we're also at the point where um, we're going to evolve beyond that now. So we have the original template and now we have the new human template as we evolve into uh, something different. So what I'm feeling right now is that, wow, this is a big one. You know, it, it, to me, it's one of the biggest moments that we've been through. Absolutely, everything is changing. And I feel that um, we're no longer, those of us who are making the shift, we're no longer homo sapiens, as it were. We've evolved to become homo something else, you know, crystal or Christos or whatever. We're, we're different, we're a different species now because of this expansion of consciousness. But what we learn, of course, is that everything is consciousness in our multiverses. And that as consciousness expands and grows, everything expands and grows, including our human self, because as I mentioned earlier, we are through our DNA connected to all these other levels and evolving with all these other levels. So that's as you asked, you know, where am I? What am I doing at the moment? And just riding with this incredible energy that is taking us into uh, another reality or another level of reality beyond uh, what we've known before. And it's all happening right now in, at this time. Yes, I love this conversation. And, you know, it's, it's true. So much information is coming through regarding the DNA and how, as we activate the DNA, we activate our consciousness or, you know, whether it's activating our consciousness activates the DNA. And, um, and then we, we must be able to integrate that and ground that. And, and so this is my understanding of how we sort of activate ourselves into being the new human. Um, yeah. Is that your take on it? And can you, can yeah. you take us into some more of how, you know, how do we do that? Well, you know, one of the things that always interested me and annoyed me and bothered me because I've been doing Ascension for a very long time. You know, some people are saying, oh, I woke up in 2016. Well, I, mean, I woke up in 2001 um, and have been doing it for a long time. And one of the things I noticed was how intense the physical symptoms were in the physical body. And um, a lot of people, especially now, are saying they feel like currents moving through the physical body, um, which is the, uh, the light codes, the photonic light, whatever you want to call it, that is coming into the body and into 
Um, and it's not just received through uh, the pineal gland, although that it does go into the pineal gland, but it's being received through the connections into the DNA. So it's almost like a whole body experience. And that's why so many people feel uh, intense symptoms when the light code energy is high, because what happens is the DNA lights up like a Christmas tree. Literally, you, you light up, and though you can't see it with your physical eyes, um, because we have at the moment 3D, 5D vision, but uh, everything lights up and, and your body becomes radiant and glowing. And if you could see the, the web of light, you would see yourself like a star, just glowing. And of course, that puts a lot of pressure on the physicality. So of course, you're going to feel exhausted because you know, you're used to being a candle and now you're a sun. And um, that high level energy is also cleansing and clearing out everything that isn't of that energy because this particular aspect of our DNA only works in the energy of love. Otherwise it miscreates at the lower level. So whenever we are zapped up into this higher level, uh, things happen in the physical body. And I think one of the most um, noticeable things that happen is in the nervous system. I know I used to have terrible sessions with my nervous system, feeling like it was being fried uh, because there was so much energy moving through. But I found that recently, since I've been working with the DNA aspect of it, I don't get that anymore. It seems to have just kind of, um, now that my body kind of realizes where this energy is supposed to go, so it's going into the DNA and, and what it's doing is, is lighting us up, making us radiant um, and connecting us to all these other aspects of ourselves so that we can uh, manifest and create at the level that we were designed to work at, not at this lower level where we stum stumble along thinking that, oh, we're 3D and we've got to move things in time and space and we've got to um, do affirmations and attract things and work really hard because when this new DNA system is online and humming along, you don't have to work at all because it's, it's almost like an automatic system that facilitates connection with your desires and feelings and what you need and what your higher self feels you need and, and what the divine feels is best for you. And there's this whole system of energies working together to create an optimum experience for you on the earth. So mm -hmm. yes, indeed, you know, as we step into the new earth, we have to have all of these aspects of ourselves. Uh, we need to, or what's a good way of saying it, we will have, <laughs> um, they will come into alignment so that they can work together seamlessly. And we can know ourselves as the powerful, radiant and creative beings that we in fact are on, on the earth. So it's very important. And uh, when we do that, I think we will understand that our physical being is as important as our soul uh, in this co-creation on the earth. The, the, the physical body is a necessity. It's not a something that we just drag along and wish we could get rid of you know, when we go home. We are home in the physical body. And as we begin to understand that, I think we'll, we'll move into a very different relationship with our physical body, um, understanding that it is actually a sacred vessel um, in, in that it's, it's part of this whole energetic framework that allows us to exist and to create and to manifest and to do amazing things while we have our time on the earth. So I bet um, <laughs> that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I love everything you shared about that and um, jotting down notes and like, yes, about the nervous system and, you know, needing yeah. to kind of attune to the new levels. And, and I do know people who are absolutely living in the mindset and the attitude of, I don't need to work hard. I'm in the frequency of, you know, I'm already, you know, in the abundance, no matter what's showing up in my life and holding sort of holding that new human frequency. Of course, I know 
people who are also the opposite of that, like, well, that all sounds great, but I got to get my bills paid and, you know, and like the daily grind. And I'd like to be there, but I, I'm not there. So for people who are maybe not quite aligned with that way of thinking and being, even though they, they like the idea of it and they think it's possible, what are you like, are there, is there some advice or some, um, what can you what can you share about how do we align with that new human way of being knowing that it's all as it's meant to be and everything's coming and i don't have to like work and you know and 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 produce Total. and all of those things so hard well i think that to be perfectly honest i don't think any of us is fully in the new human um all the time because we at this point of transformation and transition we kind of bounce between them you know so you have your days when you're just flowing going with the flow and humming along and then other days it's like oh what happened you know because <laughs> you, you end up back down and you're full of anxiety and stress and um there's two simple things i do when i realize i've, I've dropped out of my new human frequency because it is a frequency um is to breathe deeply I always say to myself, if I get triggered or I get angry, breathe, because the moment you start breathing, you're opening your heart center. And of course, because your lungs are there where your heart is. And as you breathe deeply, it lifts and expands the heart. So the moment you start breathing deeply, you're calming down and you're opening your heart and it allows you to energize other aspects of your body. And then the second thing you do is to make a conscious choice to go back to the higher frequency, which is love, uh, joy, peace, acceptance, creativity. It has to be a conscious choice. And I always say to people, you will feel it in your body. When you're tight and stressed and angry, uh, you know, and you're all like this, then you're in the lower frequencies. When you're feeling like everything is flowing, everything is calm, everything's moving into the right place, then you're up in the higher frequency. And of course, the great thing is that, um, we can move between them because we are um, awakened enough, whatever you want, the term you want to use, to feel which frequency we, frequency we are on. And this is the important thing, to feel in our body where we are in terms of frequency. And we can, when we go out, we, we go shopping to the mall, whatever. Yes, we drop, but we're conscious that we've dropped. And then we go back to where we need to be. Because people who are at the lower frequencies cannot do that. They can't get up because they haven't yet got the, uh, the ability, the knowledge, whatever it is. Um, they're not connected enough to move between them like we can. So it's, it's a really a privilege for us at the beginning of this process to be able to say, look, I can see, uh, I can feel what frequency I'm on and I can move myself back to where I go. Where I need to go and and I always say to people it is a choice it's an intention um, you get to choose what frequency you want to vibrate on you're not a victim of circumstances and of course the more you choose to vibrate on higher frequency the more you choose to be love uh, because I always call uh, the DNA is called the book of love it comes from Mary Magdalene's teachings that as we write our lives and it's recorded in the DNA, it is meant to be the history of how we express love on the earth. So the moment we drop out of the frequency of love, we are not writing our story of love anymore. We're doing something else. So we have to keep reminding ourselves to come back to love and be at that frequency of love, whether it's love for others or love for ourselves, where we're nurturing ourselves and caring for ourselves and making choices that are good for ourselves. But we have to be on that frequency in order to start creating the story of love in our life, because that's ultimately what the New Earth Human is about. It's about creating stories of love, adventures of love, uh, and doing away with the old low level miscreations uh, that resulted from our, our drop of frequency from where we were originally because we were created as to be human angels in a, in a human container and then dropped into this belief that we were just humans. And now we're coming back into the understanding that we are in fact 
human angels and more that we are evolving into galactic cosmic beings who are in physical form for now, uh, but enjoying the possibilities of this physical form. Because I think I always say to myself, this is just the beginning, this understanding, because I believe that once we know how to drive the DNA, <laughs> the word, you know, uh, how we can connect with it, work with it, we can do the most amazing things. We can do miracles. And this was how Jesus and Mary Magdalene, I believe too, did miracles on the earth because they were fully uh, connected to their physical form and the DNA within it and were able to draw on that power from spirit and of course from uh, the codes and the energies, but through the physical body to create uh, miracles on earth. And I think that we can do the same once we're fully connected and we understand or we feel into, because I don't think it's a, an understanding thing rather than a feeling of how this consciousness flow actually works and how we can start manifesting with it and co-creating with it in, in much more powerful ways than we've had access to in the past. Mm. So, you know, that that is um, part of the, for me, the excitement of where we are now, because although it's a difficult time, you know, wow, the energies are really coming through. And I've noticed that a lot of light workers are also leaving the planet at the moment. It's, it's amazing hearing about this one's gone and that one's gone uh, because there's this huge change. And a lot of people have finished their mission and because the mission took them to new earth and they, and they had decided that they would not stay for that next phase. They were going back into spirit once it had happened. So this is what's happening now. We've taken the step into new earth it's definitely here. And we have the, the privilege of discovering or rediscovering who we are in this physical form and that we are indeed tremendously powerful. Because I, you know, I know it's very popular to say today that you know everything you need is within you. You don't have to go outside of you. And that really is true because it's within you, in your cells and in your DNA. It, it's, it's deep there within you. So everything you need to know is in either in your DNA records in, in the physical body or it's in your soul Akasha and the access that your soul has to the cosmos. So whatever you need to know, you have access to um, through this combination of aspects that is you, the body, soul and spirit. Mm, wonderful. Um... So something I want to kind of unpack in that is the idea that, you know, some people are really living in new earth experience mm -hmm. and consciousness while other people, and I alluded to this, you know, in my last question, other people are, are not feeling it there. Do you, you know, some people say there's a split. Some people say it's just different dimensions of reality that we're experiencing. And as we ascend our consciousness and our awareness and our bodies, we're able to live in this higher frequency. Do you see that as something that's side by side or is it a like an earth split? Is it a, is it a parallel timeline? How do you that's see that? Question. I see it in a quantum way. I believe that uh, we can live in different frequencies and in different dimensions as it were to be in the same space so we're all living on planet earth <laughs> some of us are living in the lower frequency some of us are living in the higher frequencies some of us are living in new earth some are living in an alternative earth some are still struggling around in the old earth and all these things are happening in the same space uh, because it's a quantum space and um, we're all activating so that's why we have to that's what's so exciting about it you know in this game we get to be on different levels all at the same time. And we have to be aware of, of where we are and what level we're on, because we don't want to get dragged down and get stuck in the bottom again, you know? So it's constantly being aware of the fact that there are these different uh, dimensional levels, whatever you want to call them, frequency levels, coexisting in the same space. And that's why it is difficult for people to fully enter the new earth consciousness because uh, we're so used to being in the old patterns and the old thought forms 
in the lower level. So we get pulled into them so easily because they're, they're all around us still. So we have to focus on, okay, no, I want to be at this, this other level. I want to be in this higher frequency. And as I said, the, the passageway to that is through gratitude, love, um, flow of, of divine energies to be with that rather than the lower energies of the ego and the aggression and the anxiety and the fear and all those stories that go on. Because at the lower levels, um, there's a real connection to drama, you know, dramas of all sorts, family dramas, national dramas, global dramas, whatever drama you can think of, it's, it's fueling life on the lower levels. But when you get to the higher levels of the new earth, you find it's calmer. Um, people are uh, more loving, more connected to each other, and are more focused on trying to create or actually creating or trying actually creating the new earth energy. I do think that though, as we progress further, we will continue to ascend, uh, which means move or access higher frequencies. Um, and maybe not everyone is coming on that journey. So it's possible that at some point there will be a separation of frequencies and that the new earth will move off and be the new earth and the old earth will, or the alternative earth will go off and be the alternative earth somewhere else. And um, because that's what it seems that people are seeing uh, when they do um, hypnosis therapies or whatever, um, they see a new earth where there are less people and uh, it's, it's very beautiful and very calm and very tranquil. That's what they see. Mm -hmm. And if you think, now, how are we going to get from here to there uh, without trauma? Because Archangel Michael always says to me that the new earth is not about trauma. It's not about large amounts of people being killed and, and, and disasters and whatever. It's about a, a graceful transition. So it's possible that at some point there will be this, this separation of dimensions that um, we notice already, uh, but we can move between them, but maybe in the future, we won't be able to move between them so easily and they will separate out completely, mm. possibly. But, you know, I, I'm not predicting. What I'm saying is we have to see how it evolves. We don't know. It's an ongoing creation, evolution, and we're creating it together. So we have to see, you know, does everyone come with or do some go somewhere else or, or what happens in this ongoing creation? Yeah. Yeah. I love the way you're, you're describing this. And um, so a question that, that I have around that is, you know, a lot of people, this has been coming up a lot in a lot of conversations lately with me, for me, um, is the collective that it takes a certain number of the collective of humanity to have the new earth experience and the moving up as a collective versus as an individual. And not that we shouldn't do our individual work, but that there really yeah. is a, almost like a tipping point or the hundredth monkey effect where when a certain body of humanity is ready, what's your perspective on that? Well, I feel that um, it's obvious that not everyone's going up at this point, mm -hmm. but also that it's also obvious that when a person does reach this higher level, ascend, whatever you want to call it, they become incredibly powerful. And as we know that the ascension process is not about individuals, it's about communities. So when you get a community of people working together at this powerful level, um, it becomes evident that powerful things are going to happen, you know. So I don't know how many monkeys you need, you know, whether it's 99 monkeys or 102. Um, but when you get a, a quorum of people who are working at this level, but I still feel that we as um, light workers or whatever you want to call us, new earth humans, we haven't yet realized what we're working with. We're still thinking because we're thinking. Um, and we're not fully conscious of this powerful mechanism that we have, this bioorganic quantum computer that is our physical body. And once we start switching on what we can do with this thing and, and the combination of soul and spirit and physicality, we'll do the most amazing things. 
but at the moment we're still in like a box and we haven't sort of seen what is possible um, because it's it's been so long since we were connected in this way and also there's new energies coming in all the time so my feeling is that very soon we're going to start waking up to the miraculous within us in in ways that we haven't felt before and i don't i'm not talking about um particularly about um what are the things that people consider to be like being psychic and and astral traveling and whatever i i don't think it's going to be those those are the old things i think there's going to be something that we open to um about how incredible we are and it may well be connecting fully with galactics um and, and realizing how we can bring them into our reality without having to get in a spaceship and go there uh, because we can we can do this with consciousness and um by connecting up uh through these grids that we have access to because when we understand fully the dna's function with the the light grids and the sacred geometries we can actually travel anywhere we want to in consciousness on the grids um simply by this process of um entrainment uh focus intention whatever there's so much that's available to us and to to acquire information uh visit places connect with beings and then bring that back into uh our physical reality in ways that can be really um beneficial for us in, in establishing the new earth mm -hmm. but you know in the past we've been so what's the word i want almost trapped by this belief system uh you know that says some of these beings are evil and some of them want to do this and some of them are that and and we so we're all anxious and frightened and we sort of have closed ourselves off from the magnificence of what we can do when we connect with our galactic reality and connect with our cosmic being and the fact that as i said earlier everything we need to know is within us we just need to take a deep dive in and then go out into the cosmos and experience um who we are and what we can do and i think that is going to be the moment when we suddenly realize wait a minute this is what we've been working towards for so long um yeah. it's going to be that's going to be the 100 monkeys light bulb moment um because i'm not waiting for spaceships to land or um you know that, that kind of thing i don't think that's what's going to happen i think it's going to be a consciousness connection of some in some way that makes us truly understand what it means to be galactic and how we can connect with uh, this galactic family that we work with yeah absolutely and you know that ties into this show so well the summit of the you know the star seeds the walk-ins new humans and part of that is the the hybrid consciousness and the the et well you know that's kind of maybe an old-fashioned word but the yeah. ultra terrestrials or how whatever we wanted the light beings how when we they actually are us right at a, at a higher level or at it's at a maybe if it's a different okay. timeline galactic levels yeah mm -hmm. and how when we open up that communication that gives us the what we need to evolve into the new human and you know it's already in us it's a matter of expanding to op open up to and allow that communication and information to come through which i understand is uniquely tied to the dna as we're activating yeah, we're the dna we're able to receive that consciousness yeah. because we have to move beyond the mind and stop using our mind as a reference point we have to think with the, with the body with the whole body with the dna and only then when we can switch off the mind and use the computer the the organic quantum computer that we can then start moving outwards i also you know you mentioned um different aspects of ourselves that i mentioned time uh sorry i mentioned space as being quantum that we're in the same space at the same time but we're also in multiple timelines and future past present it's all quantum it's all one so not just are there is the space thing a bit weird and flexible but we're also weird and flexible in terms of time you know there, there is no time we're in past present future whatever all at the same time 
So there's so much going on that your mind can never, ever begin to comprehend what's going on. So I think the mind was given to us to, to deal with our life on earth, on, on the surface reality, you know, so that we can get up and eat and go to work or do whatever we do, um, sleep and, and do human life. This is what the mind was for. But unfortunately, the mind has taken over everything and now it wants to control everything. But before that, we had um, this DNA system. Now we think about, we talk about the stone age as though it was something terribly primitive because they didn't have writing or civilization. But what they did have was this incredible connection with the earth itself and with the cosmos. They didn't need writing. They didn't need cities because they were connected in to everything, all that was, all that is, all that will be. So um, one of the things that I've been working with too is the rediscovery of how ancient humans are on the earth. We've been here hundreds of thousands of years, if not millions in some form, all the Homo sapiens has only been here, I don't know how long, about 35, 40,000 years, but we go back uh, much longer than that. You know, we were taught, we were created by God 4,000 years ago. I was taught that at school. So I'm thinking, okay, we've only been here 4,000 years, you know, and that goes back to the Egyptians and the Sumerians and writing and civilization and that's it, you know, like what a mess. But when we discover that actually we go back, way, way back, and that our original ancestors were shamans and galactic travelers and did all sorts of magical things uh, with the earth and on the earth. And that, that knowledge of what, what we were before is still inside of us. If we want to, we can find out what they did and how they traveled. But of course, we have to acknowledge that we have this ancestral line. It doesn't end 4,000 years ago, you know, that we actually go back way back. And that if you take it even further back, that that was the moment when we were angelic beings or galactic beings, beings of light. And that we came to the earth to start this adventure here. And we started off maybe as one celled organisms or birds or fish or whatever. And so we evolved and it was a flow of energy and how we are today, man, what an adventure, you know. But uh, we have to be open to understanding or feeling, understanding not a good word, feeling it, feeling it in ourselves. And I think um, a lot of us are feeling it in ourselves at night when we're sleeping. We have these weird dreams. I used to have these, I wouldn't call, I would call them weird, but they were so boring. I used to dream that I was traveling, I was traveling and I was meeting people, but it wasn't exciting. It was just ordinary people, you know, and I'm thinking like, why every night am I just meeting people? And then I realized it was a, a kind of holographic metaphor for galactic traveling. It's going out of my body and into the galaxy and meeting with, um, because some of these people were people who were dead already. I knew that they weren't alive. So I was meeting with spirits and souls and, and beings and maybe plotting and planning for the new earth, who knows. But I think our dream states often tell us a lot about what's going on in our DNA. Mm -hmm. So we're having to learn to do what our ancestors did. Uh, look at our dreams, um, meditate, astral travel, you know, in that way, get, go into consciousness. And you can travel down your DNA timelines. You can travel out into the galaxy. Uh, all of this can be done when you park your body in uh, park mode and go into uh, quantum computer mode where you're, you're running the DNA and, and going through all the records that are in you and that take you out into other aspects of yourself, other aspects, because we are all the one. We all come from the divine. So everything we travel through, everything we experience takes us back to that one original uh, impulse that is the divine heart, which is also our heart, you know, so we're in this incredibly complex, wonderful, simple, joyful experience that is, has reached the point where we're understanding and feeling and moving into a much closer connection with all of this. And we're calling it ascension and we're feeling it in our bodies because our bodies are, are just waking up and going like, what is this? I haven't felt this for a long time. 
So it's, it's a, an amazing experience that we have. And yes, the DNA is central to that. We cannot, I would go so far as to say, we cannot ascend without the DNA coming with as well, because everything that we need for the ascension process in order to connect and, 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 uh, and feel, uh, comprehend, understand is in our DNA. Mm. Yeah, so, you know, there, as you're talking, I have a quandary that came up. I, I'd love to ask you about, um, you know, you're talking about how we used to in our lineage or our ancestors had these mystical gifts and they were more awakened and more, more activated. Maybe their DNA was fully functioning. Do you have a perspective on what happened that we sort of devolved into not having all of our gifts activated anymore? Well, yeah, life on earth is an experiment. It's, it's a, an angelic creation. So we arrived on earth and discovered, well, it's, it's, this is something new. It's, it's difficult, it's different. And of course there were um, family squabbles about uh, how we were going to do this. And some angels decided we'll do it this way and some angels said, let's do it that way. And the one bunch said, let's drop frequency. And when they dropped frequency, they started fighting with each other and fighting with humans. So we did, as a species, drop frequency. And I think this was when Homo sapiens was actually created. Uh, if you go back to the story of the Anunnaki and all that, um, they weren't creating us. They created a form of us called Homo sapiens. And they were able to manipulate this. But of course, only so far, because even though we're Homo sapiens, we have within our DNA, the original template that was created by spirit for life on earth. And what we've been doing in the ascension process is reactivating that original template so that we can again reconnect with what we knew before. Because although we dropped frequency and we went into some dark corners and alleyways in our evolution, we never lost what was inside of us. And when we can accept that in the stone age, so-called, we weren't primitive savages. We were actually closer to our magical angelic forms than we are today. We can start exploring that, that part of ourselves and connecting with that part of ourselves. But we've been manipulated to believe that that was you know, something we need to move away from because it wasn't civilized and it was uh, animal, uh, you know, because it was just because of Darwin, we've come to believe that we were just animals in that period and that's why you know so no we were we were part of a creation uh by angelic forces through divine plan through divine um, plan divine impulse intention to create a form on the earth in material that would be able to embody the soul and the angelic aspect and the divine aspect and still be in material form and that is what the new earth is about, to have a material being that is also a galactic cosmic divine being at the same time, and that we can create and interact and co-create together without forgetting who we are, and to do so in the frequency of love, and to stay in that frequency of love, not to drop down because it might be more interesting, you know, down the bottom where we can do some dramatic things which are very dramatic but are not in the frequency of love so we're, we're going back into that that wonderful so you know i always think of it like going back to the original template but activating the new human so that we're still evolving we're not going backwards as it were we're actually going forward but in this moment integrating all that has been and all that will be into who we are right now at this moment which is a divine human angelic being, which is just so amazing and exciting mm. um, to realize. And, and as I said earlier, have to have the DNA with us because that is where we keep our holographic records and our, and our experiences of life on earth that we can connect with our soul energies and our soul records of life in the galaxy and our divine connection. Hmm. So yes. that's why this time is so exciting for us 
Yeah, I agree. It really is. And, you know, when I'm really, I'm feeling it. I know many of the people that I've been speaking to and spending time with are also really feeling these energies and it, you can't help but be excited about the possibility of, oh, you know, what we're, what we're stepping into and evolving into. So um, this, this has been such a fascinating conversation. Um, Celia, I'd love for you to share, you have a free gift for the, the audience. I'd love for you to share about that. It's a recording. Um, what I'm going to be doing uh, tomorrow, I'll be making it. I'm going to do a, um, a visualization activation uh, with Archangel Michael, but to help people to activate their original template, to activate the DNA and then activate their new human template so that it will be easier for them to, to work with these energies in the ascension process as we move into this new earth. So that will be available for people. Um, I'll put it on Vimeo and people can connect into it from the, the free gift section. Wonderful, yes. I'll have links to that in the, in the show notes and, the, and your speaker page. Um, wow, this whole, this whole conversation has been fascinating. Is there anything that you would like to leave the, the listeners with before we end, um, final thoughts? I think that, uh, you know, as Archangel Michael always says to me, just remember it's an adventure. It's meant to be fun. You know, we don't, it's difficult to say we, we see so much uh, suffering on the earth, um, but that that we're meant to be here to enjoy our creations. And so to, to try to relax and, and enjoy and create and to step into this new reality and knowing that when that happens, when we step into that new reality and we anchor into the frequency of love, then because it's a quantum story, the suffering drops away. It never has been because it never was in the frequency of love. This is the, the most amazing paradox that all the suffering and anguish and negativity that has been part of the past will no longer exist because it doesn't exist at that frequency that we're moving towards. Mm -hmm. So, you know, why spend your time in a frequency that's going to disappear soon? Rather move into frequency of love where you have the ability to create a future that is filled with the things that you want to experience and enjoy. So this is such a powerful and such a loving moment for us all. Mm. Yes, that was so beautiful. Thank you. And I love thinking of the DNA as the book of love. That's so perfect for this time. Thank you so much, Celia. It's been delightful. Yes. And this the time flies <laughs> talking to you, your wealth of information. And I appreciate everything you've shared so much. So thank you so much for, for all that you've um, shared with us today and your, and your free gift as well. Been wonderful to be with you. Thank you so much. Mm, bye bye. For my now. pleasure. Yes. And to everyone watching and listening, thank you for tuning in. Um, go download Celia's free gift. That sounds amazing. And have a wonderful day or evening wherever you are. Namaste.